One of the biggest advantages to being able to sew for yourself is being able to get a custom fit. But some types of patterns can be very difficult to adjust when you have measurements in different sizes. This is very true of footwear patterns, which have different foot widths, different ankle sizes, and the adjustments are not easy to make, and most designers of footwear patterns, such as slippers, don't include instructions for it. This can be a big problem when the ankle doesn't fit right, and maybe your chubby baby can't wear baby shoes at all, or the ankle is just too big and the slippers keep falling off. But the slipper patterns by Guru P Designs include detailed size adjustment instructions, and they can be a little overwhelming, so I'm gonna walk you through how to use them. But one note, if you are making these slippers as a gift or for someone that you can't measure, it's totally okay just to make their US shoe size. The pattern is true to size. I wear a size seven in shoes and I wear a size seven in the slippers as well. I measure perfectly into those measurements. One thing that I will note though, is that the pattern in the adult sizes is graded to fit the largest possible calf and ankle sizes at the top end. So if you're making the sizes at the top end, you may find that the calf and ankle are larger than your average store-bought slippers. So if you're making it for somebody that has a large shoe size, but is fairly slim, I would recommend downsizing the ankle. But so the first step in getting a custom fit is of course to take your measurements. You're gonna start with your foot length, which should correspond exactly to US shoe sizes. And when measuring your foot length, you wanna do it with your foot flat on the floor. It's very easy to get an inaccurate measurement if your foot is in the air because of the curve around the heel. For the ankle, you're measuring the circumference right above the ankle bones. For the calf, you are measuring the circumference at the largest part. Foot width is done a little differently than usual. It's done as a circumference, which allows you to factor in the foot depth as well, which is very handy, especially for babies with chubby feet. So you're measuring around the widest part, just below the toes. Now, what are you gonna do with these measurements? Well, the foot length will be your main size, and the sole will always be this size with no adjustments at all. The foot width you're going to use to choose which file to print because the pattern includes three files, one for narrow feet, one for regular width, and one for wide feet. This makes it much easier to do the adjustments because you only have to adjust the ankle and the calf if you're doing a knee-high boot, and you don't have to worry about the foot width. You can just go with whatever is closest. So when you go to print, you wanna print your main size, which is the foot length, plus your ankle size, if it's different. And if you're making knee-high boots, you want to print your calf size, if that is different as well. If you are doing an ankle adjustment, then you'll also want to print the toe adjustment piece instead of the regular toe. There's a handy chart in the pattern that shows you which pages you need to print. And it's typically not very many. For kid sizes, it's just a few pages. For adult sizes, I needed seven pages for a pull-on knee-high boot. Would, would have been less for an ankle boot, um, and it would have been more for a knee-high boot with a zipper. So you typically only have to tape a few pages together, two pages for the sole, the toe fits on its own page, and then a few pages for the boot top. Less if you're doing an ankle boot, more if you're doing a knee-high boot. Once you've got all the pages printed and taped together, now you can do your adjustments. So let's start with the ankle adjustment. My main size here is the pink line, the women's size seven. Now my ankle actually fits into a size seven perfectly, but I've printed a couple other sizes so I can show you how I would adjust it if my ankle was larger or smaller. So if my ankle was larger in the women's nine, which is the purple dashed line here, then I would just extend the pink line horizontally out to meet the larger line. This makes the ankle wider. And if I needed to make the ankle smaller, then I would take the smaller size, the women's six, with the blue dotted line, and I would just extend that down to meet the pink line. And so I'm cutting around the pink line on the bottom and the curved part, but going up the back of the ankle, I would be using the smaller blue dotted line. Now, because we've adjusted the ankle, we need to adjust the toe so that the length is still correct. That's where the toe adjustment piece comes in. So you would take this piece, and if you made the ankle wider, then your toe is going to need to be shorter so that the entire boot is the right length to match the sole. So these numbers here, minus one, minus two, minus three. So if you made the ankle larger by one size, then you would use the minus one line because you're making the toe shorter by one size. In my example, we, it was two sizes, so I would have used the minus two line because I had made the ankle larger by two sizes, so I need the toe to be smaller by two sizes. If you're making the ankle smaller, 
then you're going to need to make the toe longer. So then you're gonna use the plus numbers. So in my example, I made the ankle smaller by one size, so I would use the plus one line. If you're making a knee-high boot, you're going to need to adjust the calf. But before you adjust the calf, make sure that you select the correct line at the top. There are lines for tall, medium, and petite height, and for cuff or no cuff. So I'm going to make the petite height, because I am petite, and I'm going to make it with a cuff, so I'm going to use this line here. So my adjustment will start from there. Again, my main size is the pink line, size 7, but my calf measures the smaller one, the women's size 6. So that's the blue dotted line. So I'm going to start filling in this blue dotted line here with my pencil, and then it needs to be blended in to meet the pink line at the ankle because that's where, what my size is at the ankle. And there we go, that's all the adjustments that are needed for a perfect customized fit in a pair of slipper boots. Next, I'm going to be making a pair of upcycled slipper boots from a sweater with the ribbing used for the cuff. So when that video is published, I'll link it up here. But in the meantime, if you don't see it, please make sure to subscribe so you see it when it's published.